Hey everyone, this is Baylor Ray. I am your host today in our new project where we are going to add GraphQL to an existing Angular app. So this is Angular 4. It's the latest. I made sure I had the latest because I usually just say whatever, but today I am using the latest. And so what we want to do is we've created this, this project here where we're listing out cars and comments. It's kind of a play on the cars and coffee idea. And here I've just, I've only used one car. I'm not too uh, special here, I guess. But we, we're, what we're doing is we're listing out cars here that we've named them. We have a, the year, make, and model. And if we click on it, then we get to see a bigger picture as well as our comments on this car. So when we're building this project, we're going to use GraphQL as our data, our GraphQL backend. So the first thing we'll need to do is install the GraphQL node package. And then once you have that installed, the next thing we'll want to run is GraphQL init, and then we give it a project name. And so I'm going to call this cars and comments. This is what it will, this is how it will appear inside of our GraphQL account. And it will also create a directory with this name cars and comments. So we'll go ahead and run that. And you can see it's created a bunch of stuff. And we're just going to CD into that, that directory for cars and comments. And the only thing we really care about right now, uh, you need to kind of look at this directory once you've done it yourself. But what we really care about is editing the types.graphql file. And this file contains all of our types that are you can kind of consider these as our database tables in a, in a sense. And so this is the default. It gives you a user. You can see it's added this attribute to say this is a model. Um, and then when we do an ID, GraphQL here has this is unique attribute. And so this gives us ways to add extra data uh, to, to actually turn this into more of an actual database structure. The first thing we need to do is change the structure to match our app for cars and comments. And the first thing we're going to do is define a new type called car. It's going to be a model. And here we're just going to add that we have an ID. It is unique, a name, a make, a model, a year, and an image. And the next thing we want to do is we want to add our comment type. And this is also going to have an ID. And we're just going to have the author and the body of the comment. Now, the next thing that we need to do is link these two types together. And the way we do that is we're going to define that we say we have comments and we wrap this in square brackets to tell GraphQL that this is an array of the comment type and we tag this with an attribute for relation and we just name this car comments and then we can do the same thing on our comment and so we say that this has a car it is a car type the bang indicates it's required, so it can't be null. You have to have a car when you add it to a comment or you create a comment. And then we also have the relation attribute here as well, and we're naming it the same car comments. And so this will tell GraphQL that these two um, types are linked together. So now that we've done this, what we can do is we can save this file, and we're going to run GraphQL deploy. And so GraphQL is going to ask, where do we want to deploy this? I'm just going to choose the US West. We're going to leave the target type as prod, and then we're going to choose our service name. And this is kind of how GraphQL is going to store this on the on your application when you're in your console. And so we want this to be cars and comments, so that it has a unique name that's relevant to what we're doing here. And so when we run this, you can see it's going to create this. It's adding functions. We're not going to look at functions, but GraphQL does a lot more than just standard GraphQL. So what we want to do now is we want to pull up our GraphQL playground and we can do that by saying GraphQL playground. So as you can see, this has opened up the GraphQL version of Graphical. It's a very nice editor and it also has a very interesting way of showing your GraphQL schema. So if we open this up, you're going to see that GraphQL has done a lot. Here we have several query types and so we can have all cars, gives back a car array, all comments, we can get metadata on those objects, we can get individual objects, and then we have that hello function that just comes built in. In addition to queries, it's given us several mutations for creating cars and comments, updating, deleting, adding to an association. And then finally, GraphQL also includes subscriptions. So we could subscribe to these types so that we can 
have a live updating site. So the first thing we wanna do is add our first car. So we're gonna tell our GraphQL that we want to have a mutation called first car. We're going to at create a, we're gonna run the create car mutation. We're gonna have a name, we're gonna call it Zbina. We're gonna have the make as Volkswagen, model as the Beetle, the year is 67. And then we're using Pixabay's API here to just grab an image of Volkswagen Beetle. And then once we have all of this, once we've created our car, we're just gonna have GraphQL give us back the ID. And so if we run this, we're gonna get back our new ID for our car. And there we go. So it's loaded, the internet's running a little bit slow today, but we have gotten our car ID back. And so now we can also go in and we can say that we want to create our first comment to go on this car. So we're gonna create another mutation. We're gonna call this first comment. We're gonna say that we wanna create a comment. We're gonna specify that we have the car ID, which is what we pulled from when we created our car. We're gonna have an author, Bob Wiley, the body will be Let's Go Sailing. And what we're gonna do is get back the ID of this comment. And just so we can kind of play with some GraphQL stuff, we're also gonna get back the name of the car. And so we can run this, we can say run first comment. And you can see now we've created a new comment. It has an ID, so it did create it successfully. And it gave us back our car. Now the last thing we'll do is we're just gonna run a quick query just so we can play with GraphQL a little bit. So we're gonna close that and we're gonna go down here. And we're gonna say that we have a query for our cars and comments. We're gonna query for all our cars. We're gonna ask for their ID name and basic information about our car. And then we're also gonna ask for all the comments on those cars. And so if we run this, you can see we get back our car, we have our image, we have an array of comments, and it's the comment that we created, it's our first comment. So now that we've done this, it's time to hop back into our Angular app and start changing out the way that we're listing out these images and these product, these cars, because right now it's just static HTML. So the first thing we need to do is we need to add Apollo GraphQL to our project. So back in our command line, I'm gonna go back down into our Angular app and we're gonna install the following packages. And there's a lot here. Uh, this changed very recently in Apollo GraphQL. Uh, they used to have an Apollo project that contained everything and they broke it all out individually. And so we need to install Apollo Angular the Apollo Angular Link HTTP module, our Apollo client, our in-memory cache, and we also need to install GraphQL and GraphQL tag. So we'll go ahead and install these. And the next thing we need to do is we need to make some changes to our app comp module so that we can register Apollo and have it all set up and nice. So here we are in our app module, and we're gonna have to make a lot of changes here. And really this is something you'll probably just copy and paste directly from Apollo documentation. So we're gonna to have to add several modules for to register Apollo. Uh, we're gonna get our HTTP client module for Angular, and then we're gonna have our Apollo module and our Apollo client, essentially. We're gonna have our HTTP link modules for Angular, and then we're gonna have, I'm sorry, for Apollo, and then we're gonna have our in-memory cache for Apollo. And then we need to add those to our imports. And so we're just gonna go down here and have our HTTP link module, Apollo module, and HTTP link module. And then finally, we need to go into our app module and we need to add a constructor. And so here we're gonna have our constructor taking an instance of Apollo and an instance of our Apollo link. And we're gonna use these two things together. And so we're gonna say Apollo, we need, to, we need to create a new Apollo module here. Our cache is gonna be our in-memory cache, which we imported above. And we're gonna specify our HTTP link and we're gonna create this with our GraphQL URL, which we can obtain from our playground that we had open, and we can just copy this and paste this in. Perfect. So this is everything that we need to do to get our Apollo registered. So the next thing we need to do is hop into our car list component and make changes there. So when I made this, it's all static, so we need to add Apollo and GraphQL to this. So here we are inside of our car list component, we need to import Apollo and also our GraphQL tag. We're gonna define an interface called car, and this is just so that we have strong typing whenever we're inside of our template, we can see what's available on car. And you can see I'm just pulling basically everything that we have in our GraphQL object. The next thing we need to do is define our GraphQL query. And so what this looks like is we are just defining a constant where it's a string that we've tagged with the GraphQL tag. 
And here we're using basically the same query that we had above or before when we were in our playground where we say we're going to query for all cars and we're basically asking for all the information just like we have in our interface up here for car. And then once we have that, we're going to come inside of our component. We're going to define that we are loading as true so that that's the default state of our component. And we're going to have a place of cars to store all of our cars that we get back from GraphQL. So when we construct or when we initialize this component, we need to grab an instance of Apollo. So we're just going to go ahead and assign this as a private and that'll make it also that'll uh, automatically make that an instance variable called Apollo. And it's going to be the Apollo type. And then when we go inside of our ng init, we need to, to tell Apollo that we're watching for a query. We're not as particular on the structure of this query type. Uh, you could define another interface there, but we're just going to call it dot any. And we're going to tell Apollo that we're running the query for our all cars query. And then we need to subscribe to our value changes. So off of this watch query, we have our dot value changes and then we're subscribing to that. It's going to give us back a data object. And inside of here, we're just going to say that this dot loading is equal to data dot loading, which is part of Apollo. And that here we're going to say this dot cars is equal to data dot all cars. And this all cars uh, object key actually comes from the query we named here where we have all cars. So the next thing we need to do is actually update our HTML template. So we'll go into that. And here you can see where I've put hard coded all of these links and these images and the titles. So let's change that over real quick. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to define that we have a loading text. So if we're loading, we show a paragraph for loading. We're going to define that we also have an a anchor tag for our car. And that is just from ng4 and we're going to iterate over each of the cars that we've assigned. And we're also going to assign that we have a router link here. And so this will allow us to actually create this link tag so that it links to a particular car based off its IP. And then here we're going to show the image, which we're using the square bracket notation here for this attribute so that we can actually have this, uh, instead of it being a hard coded car dot image URL, it's actually going to call this object dot image URL. And then finally, we're just going to put out a span with our title and it's going to be our car name, our car year, make and model. So if we save this and hop back over to our application, you can see now that it's loading this car. There's only one and this is coming from GraphQL or a GraphQL server. And if you notice at the status bar on the bottom left of my browser, you can see that it's putting in our GraphQL object ID for this car. The only problem is if we click on this, it's still going to load in our demo because I haven't, we haven't actually updated the car detail component to use GraphQL. So let's do that now. So here we are inside of our car detail component. We're going to have to import our same modules before for our Apollo and GraphQL. For this one, we're also going to import our activated route from Angular Router. And this is so that we can have access to our params and get the, the car ID from the URL up here. And then what we're going to do is we need to go ahead and define our interface for our car. And I'm pulling basically the same information that we pulled from before. Although I do think since we are using GraphQL here, it makes more sense to define these interfaces at the same place where we define our component, because that is the whole benefit of GraphQL that you don't have a single object that you get back like a REST API, but you define what you need back where you are using it. And so in this case, I'm okay with defining interfaces that are local to each component. So here we define our car interface. We also need to define our comment interface. And this is going to be a lot simpler. It just has ID, body, and author. And now we need to define our car and comments query. And so what we're going to need here is a define our query. We're going to pass in our variable for our car ID. And here I'm going to define that we want to query our car. This is part of the GraphQL uh, query type for car. And you can see I'm going to alias that as car with a little c, just so that it's easier to work with inside of JavaScript. And we're passing in our ID from our variable, and we're just getting back the basic information about the car. And then we're also going to define that we need to have our comments. And you can see I'm doing the same thing here. I'm aliasing comments here from our all comments. And we're adding this filter so that we can get our 
comments where the car ID is matching this variable car ID. And so now that we've defined our GraphQL query, we need to define a placeholder to store these objects. So we're doing our loading again, just like we did before, so that we don't have a weird flash that doesn't tell the user what's happening. And then we have our car in our comments where we're storing those. This time when we go into our constructor, we're gonna to need to define that we have our Apollo client. We're also gonna to need to tell it that we need our activated route. And we're doing that so we can get that, that ID from the parameters of the URL. So inside of our ng and on init, here we need to call this.route.params and we're gonna to subscribe to that. This gives us back our actual params object for this particular route. And so what we're going to do once we have this is we're going to go ahead and start watching for our query. We're going to tell Apollo to watch our car and comments query. And here, what we're going to pass in is our variables. And we're going to define our variable as car ID, and that comes from params.id. And so when we put this object here, GraphQL is going to pass that up, and then it's going to get placed inside of this query for this variable car ID. And so the last thing we need to do is we need to subscribe to those value changes just like we did before. It's going to give us back this data object. And then we need to tell GraphQL or our component that we're not loading anymore. We need to also assign our car and we're going to assign our comments. And that's why I structured the way I did because it made it a lot easier. When we're looking at this GraphQL query, we have car and comments both at, the, both at the root level, so we don't have to call like car.comments, we can just say data.comments. So before we can actually see this, we need to update our car detail component of HTML. So here we are inside of our car detail component.html file. And the first thing we're going to do, because we have a lot of data here, we're going to say that if we're loading, we show a loading text. Otherwise, we're going to have a container to hold our not loading state. And when we're not loading, we want to display our car title, which is just going to be basically what we had before, where it's the car name, the year, the make, and the model. And then we're going to pass in that we have a car info. This is just so that we can have the sidebar. But inside here, we're going to do our image. We're doing the same thing we did before, where we put our square bracket for source, and then we call car.image URL. The next step we need to have is our comment section. So we're going to have our heading for comments. We're going to have an ordered list of comments. And inside of here, we're going to iterate, so ng4 over each of our comments. And inside of here, we're going to have the comment body and the comment author. And so if we save this and go back, see it shows it's loading. And now it's loaded our car. Now I did have a bug. I made a mistake. Whenever we defined our car query, I did not have image URL. So a little bit of weirdness there. but. If we come back, you can see it looks basically like it did before. We have our car information, we have our image that we loaded, and then we're listing out our comments. And if we go back, we can navigate and you can see it's still loading. And Apollo does a very cool thing here where you may notice that when I click back onto this Volkswagen, that it doesn't show the loading. And that's because Apollo cache is in memory. And that's what we had when we had our in memory cache. And so unless uh, we actually tell Apollo that we changed a car Add a particular ID, it's going to hold this so that it makes the app very fast and very smooth. So if you have any questions or comments, please let me know. If you like this video, be sure to like it so I know to make more videos like this. And always don't forget to subscribe. And until I see you next time, I'm Billy Ray, and have a good day.